Welcome to the launch pad, a must-see stop at the Ping Proving Grounds here at the company's headquarters. It's home to ENSO, Ping's motion capture system, which utilizes super high-speed cameras to capture thousands of data points during the golf swing, giving Ping scientists valuable insights that can be used to improve club design and fitting techniques. We caught up with Tom Trueblood, Ping's analysis and testing manager, for a glance inside the high-tech world of golf equipment research. He couldn't reveal any secrets, but he did provide some very cool insights about what goes on behind closed doors at Ping. The number one question that I get is, what else can you really do with a golf club when it comes to engineering, especially when you factor in USGA limitations? And honestly, the, the biggest limitations we have is really, can we think it? And so it's really exciting to work here. There's obviously a lot of things we can't talk about that are coming down the pipeline, um, but, but just really, um, the culture that Ping has of, of encouraging people to not say no and to, to fail uh, and fail again and, until we can get uh, the right answer. Uh, and sometimes that takes a hundred wrong answers to get to the one that's really that smoking gun that helps us make that club that just push it to that upper echelon. So the analysis and testing group has been at Ping in, in different names over the years for the past uh, going on about 40 years now. It's critical for all of our products that we put them through the ringer, make sure that they meet the performance characteristics we need, the durability, and holding our suppliers to our tight specifications to make sure we have the best quality products for our customers. The great thing about working with analysis and testing is that we get to work with the brightest minds in the golf industry. Uh, and so with that, we have our awesome product development team that brings these new products to market. But kind of upstream from them is our golf science and our innovation groups. Uh, which work tirelessly looking outside the golf industry to help us try to look at what are some different technologies we see in other areas that could really be applied maybe in a novel fashion to golf clubs. Enzo is our motion capture lab. Um, allows us to capture the, the golfer's swing in 3D space at uh, exceptionally high frame rates, so higher than we typically see in your traditional motion capture systems. Allows us to really hone in what's happening not only at impact, but also through the entire golf swing. The markers, as you might have seen, and especially the last 15, 20 years, used a lot in cinematography for motion capture for different big studios uh, to try to overlay human body motion within an animated character. For us, we use that entirely for club research. So we have no markers on the body, it's only markers on the club itself, which allows us to really just track exactly what's happening with both the head and the shaft throughout the entire golf swing. We have a total of 10 cameras within Enzo. Eight of those are high-speed motion capture cameras running at 720 frames per second. Those are all focused, again, on the entire golf swing. But we also have two video cameras at the side and back of the room that allow us to overlay that motion capture onto the player's motion so we can see whether it's for fitting purposes, for club research, or for coaching purposes, we can understand exactly what's happening with that, that golfer's swing. Pingman was developed by Carson Solheim in the mid-70s as a way to have a repeatable golf swing. And so there were a couple of robots around at the time, and Karsten, in his typical fashion, looked at it and said, I think we can do a little bit better and do it a little bit closer to what an actual golfer would do. And a lot of that has to do with trying to get an upward motion of a golfer's shoulder that just wasn't present in all the other robots at the time. And so he developed the Pingman again in the mid-70s. Fast forward now, uh, almost 50 years later, we're still using the Pingman. It's now in its fifth generation. We use that both for performance and for durability. And robot testing gives us some awesome insights into the club that we can't get from player testing. Being able to isolate different regions on the face for different metal wood behavior. But when we look at different head geometry, we can understand how that performs. But when it comes to wedges, we can look at the, the results of different spin rate. Um, when it, the ball is dry, when the ball is wet, when there's grass uh, interaction there, we can really hold a tight understanding of, of what is possible with our golf clubs. We do use a brand new ball for every shot, and so with that, that means that each of our tests takes about 200 brand new golf balls that we'll run through. Over the course of a year, it amounts to over 15,000 golf balls. Because Pingman is such a precision instrument, we want to make sure that we take any variability out of, out of that, and so we use a brand new ball each time. We have a, a weather station right off the west side of our field that allows us to look not only at the temperature and wind speed, but also the humidity and air pressure. All of these different factors go into an efficient and effective ball model. And so making sure that while we track full ball flight with TrackMan and can see that actual flight, we also can take, take into account uh, wind speed and other things that might be affecting it differently, um, especially if we're testing and right now in wintertime or testing in the summertime. Player testing is really what sells those clubs. Pingman doesn't discern based on the sound or feel of the club. It's just trying to hit its best swing each time. Whereas with player testing, we really get more insight 
and ultimately the greatest insight into how does this club perform for a given target market. So if we're launching a new driver, again, uh, from a performance standpoint, player testing and Pingman is, is kind of our pinnacle, being able to pull that together, make sure that it performs and meets our, our standards. We will spend over 10,000 hours just really diving into new facets that can help people play better. One of the biggest tenets is uh, durability. And so with that, we do have uh, three air cannons that we will launch golf balls at up to 150 miles per hour uh, for thousands of shots, making sure that we hold that to a, a critical benchmark even our golf bags, we do a lot of testing with, again, durability, making sure with the stand actuation that we don't lose that over time as golfers want to walk and bring their stand bags that up to 10,000 times we have a robot that will just pick a bag up and slam it back down. It really helps to make sure that we understand, will this hold up in a golfer's hands? We have a great team of test engineers who, who work uh, with our engineering team to understand what are the limits of our products and what are these new materials or new designs capable of. And so with that, we do a fair amount of standardized testing to make sure we meet our benchmarks, but also have a lot of kind of bespoke testing where we look at more of the specific nature of our, our clubs. And so whether that's checking our adjustable weights or our, our loft adjustability, and putting that through its paces to make sure that it holds up from a durability standpoint. We also have a fair amount of shaft specification equipment um, and USGA equipment to make sure that we can pull, all that, all, pull that all together um, and launch a product that, that meets all of our different criteria. Looking at things and looking at new tests that might come in or new extreme designs and we have to figure out, okay, this is something we've never done before. How do we ensure that we can test it? How do we ensure that we can benchmark it to make sure that it's it's the best performing club, but also is gonna hold up and, and be that quality club for years to come for our golfers.